Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons-Garthway. Hey guys, I'm Carla Garrick. And so today's <laughs> day one of uh, the filing period for state and federal offices. No city offices. That's the other year. Those are the odd years. This is all your state, your state rep, state senator, executive council, um, county seats, and then the federal. So in New Hampshire, that's just the seat for us. It would just be CD1 because there is no U.S. Senate race this year oh. in New Hampshire. Because it's a six-year thing. So oh. I think every third election doesn't have one. You know what I mean? For, for one of the CDs. Because CD2 two is running, but right? that's not that's, Senate. That's what I'm saying. Oh. There's two senators and they run their oh, two six-year terms. So one of those, two, one of those three... Because I do know Lily Tang Williams is running, yes, the, um, so see, I think CD2 is yes, on. Yes, and interestingly yeah. enough, um, I, I never can remember what it is, the National Republican Congressional Committee, NRCC, that makes sense, um, they've actually are now taking a look at CD2. They are, neither of CD1 nor CD2 was on the NRCC's watch list like you're on your own do what you're doing um <laughs> but i did read this morning or yesterday that um cd2 is now on their watch list which means there'll be funding and stuff that so um and i think a lot of that does come from um polling that suggests that donald trump is doing better in places than they thought he was so, i read an article that in virginia like virginia is as blue as blue can be and that Trump and Biden are tied. I mean, I will tell you, I think they're making a colossal mistake. People like America for the American values. Mm -hmm. And when they start to see, like, criminal behavior at, well, at the level of the DOJ, would, where, you know, where yes. everything has become politicized. So well, and I saw a thing. I didn't see it. Somebody else was telling me this morning um, that they're, like, you know, they keep interviewing different people. Like, what do you think? What do you think? And there was a black gentleman um, from Atlanta, I guess, on the beach or whatever, and they asked him, you know, who he was voting for, and he said, I'm going to vote for Trump, and they said, why? He goes, you know what? I, he goes, I've been treated like a vic I've been, I've been victimized my entire life as, a, you know, as a black man. He goes, and he's now victimized. He goes, so, you know, they're doing it to me, they're doing it to I, him, so I'm with him, and I thought, I, saw I think that's what's resonating with a different group of people than would normally vote Republican. I, uh, yeah, I think so. I saw a funny tweet this morning. You know, uh, uh, Stephen King, right, mm. the author, he is a, he's got TDR, uh, Trump derangement syndrome. And so I don't know. I don't even follow his account. So I always find it sus when you don't follow accounts, but they're always in your feed, and they're the people you don't like saying things you don't right, enjoy. Right. Although I will say Stephen King's book on writing is an excellent book for anyone who wants to learn the toolbox of what makes a good writer or, you know, just go to chat GPT these days. Right. Um, but his tweet said, oh, Trump down six points everywhere. And I just responded and I said, $54 million disagrees. Right. And that is the number that, um, that, uh, that he raised, Trump raised on the day he got convicted, yeah. right? Yes. So, so, you know, money talks, you can't lie. Um, I did see an awful clip about him today. Trump? Yeah, someone asked him about his relationship with God, and he gave a really bad answer. I was like, oh, I would have not done that. But it was just very egotistical. Maybe he felt... Um, and, who, and maybe it wasn't in context. No, well, I mean, they let it... It's like a four-minute yeah. clip, you know, and, and, and he just... he. I, I personally didn't think he came off well, but maybe it was one of those questions where you're just so surprised. It's such a private question, right? And it's hard to right, you know, answer for some an people. Like, like if someone asked me that on the air, you know, right. I'd be like, "Huh?" But um, but yeah, it wasn't great. Um, so I know at two thirty today there are a bunch of Republicans who are going to sign yeah, up for various that, um, offices. Mark, I know Mark McLean was going. I I'm glad you mentioned it because I completely forgot about it. Um, I was up at the state house at the Secretary of State's office earlier this morning with Victoria Sullivan, who filed to run against Donna Susi for New Hampshire Senate. Uh, met up. What's with, that district? Do you know? Eighteen. Um, yes. mm -hmm. No, uh, I don't know. Because well, the numbers kind of well, changed. Because because uh, I know the float I'm looking at is Luz, District Forty, I think. Wait, or? that's number. That's, that's. I mean, who knows? State okay. rep versus yeah. state senate. Right. Um, so twenty would be. 
our Senate district, which is the yes. one that Lou was in. So 16, I think, is Keith Murphy. So it might be 18. So she's doing most of it. It's, it's just um, Manchester, or does she have Manchester something? It is Manchester and Litchfield. So she okay. gets uh, awards. So Litchfield, we need you, eh? Six, seven, eight. Nine, six, seven, eight, nine in Litchfield. And if you don't know where your wards are, you can find that information yeah. on the Secretary of State's website. Um, um, so yeah, it was a good group, group of people. There was um, we Chuck Morris was signing up too, I believe. Uh, I think he signed up before I got there okay. because I saw some people carrying signs out. Right, so I'm yeah, like, something's I saw going on. Um, while online. we were there, um, Ruth Ward, who's a uh, incumbent senator, Republican senator, had just signed up. Uh, we met up with Keith Murphy and Daryl. Is Abyss. Ruth getting primary? Do we know? I don't. Think so. She's, um, she's think pretty Nova, good, but honestly, you know, she's as old as Lou D'Alessandro. <laughs> um, I think the only primary I am aware of on that of a Republican is in Bill Gannon's district. Yes, Emily probably Phillips. deservedly so. I mean, I'm on Team Emily all the way. I think she is a go-getter. I think we need fresh blood there. And since, you know, I was in a parking lot and Gannon personally told me that Lou D'Alessandro funded part of his campaign. Maybe he's not the um, guy who should be there representing so the that, Republicans. So I think there'll be a primary there. There, you know, there's all the scuttlebutt that somebody's primary Regina. I don't think that's going to pan out. Um, that you know, but also if they're not doing their jobs, then the primary process exists for a reason. It exists so that you can pick the better candidate, right? Sure. So, uh, you know, having been told I, I'm, a, I'm little, a lot of primary, I guess I'm a little anyone, bit more I'm a little strategic bit than that. I look at I look at all the races. And I look at where um, increases in uh, the majority can happen so that we can get better results. Um, mm, I, better I, results I out of the Senate? Yeah, I yeah. have not seen a lot of that. No, There's a terrible cannabis bill, and that is where they go to yeah. kill a lot of stuff. So, and and we the need... House is where they kill any Senate bills. I mean, I've, I've been in New Hampshire long enough and involved in the in state, pro, state politics that it's taken um, a very long time, like, a decade, 15 years, to see a shift in the way the House votes. I can remember times when the things that would come out of the New Hampshire House, you were like, what world are we living in? And it's taken <laughs> more than a decade. I'm thinking like 15 years for there to be some sensibility and some more um, small government, true small government um, results come out of the House. I have seen it shift Gee, a little. Gee, what happened 15 years ago? Uh, well, I wonder. Those terrible, ago, terrible free staters must be ago, so awful. 15 years ago, the House awful. Republican Alliance actually got involved and started holding Republicans accountable to the Republican Party platform before the free staters became involved. Um, and then people moved to the state with the Free State Project. It's not all free staters that are I'm not doing saying this it's all free staters. Um, I'm just saying the free staters are marginally underappreciated for the actual marginal gains we have provided to sure. New Hampshire. Um, then, um, so, anyways, I do think that there's a way to shift um, in a good direction in the Senate. I also am cognizant and um, pragmatic about the funds that are available and the resources that are available across the board in races, whether it's state house, whether it's representative or state senate or governor or whatever. So I'm, I, I like to think that I'm pragmatic. I'd like to see um, us win and make some improvement. Um, or we could take the whole bowl of cherries and throw it up in the air. And yeah, I don't think sticks, those are do actually that. the anchors. Those that 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 is not an accurate way to represent things, right? Like it can be you like, can, hey, we, we tried this, and here's pragmatic. Here we need to shake it up a little bit. Sure. Here we can do this, right? It can be a mix of all of those things. Not it anyone has the exact right plan. Sure. I was told not to run for senate, and I just heard. Apparently now no one's running, so I, I don't know, know how good the pragmaticness is. I don't know what that's got to working. do with anything I had to say about be myself being pragmatic. But I'm just saying, people who are saying we're pragmatically looking at these things no, aren't 100 percent making. That. I said Tammy thinks I'm thinking pragmatically. Okay, I am trying to be strategic in where you, you literally we say, can okay, make whatever. gains. All right, let's talk about this awesome food freedom guide, which just came out. I want to show folks this. It is uh, the Food Freedom Guide, which is an awesome organization that is working on independent food networks. So they are trying to, it's a membership-based 
organization or association that is really trying to help the food industry in New Hampshire. You know, we have so many wonderful farms and are you literally working I'm on your phone? I am, Jesus. I'm trying to find the other article that I would like to talk about mm. and I forgot to print it out so I'm reading while you're reading, it's fine. I'm trying to find something. All right. Um, I, I didn't bring notes, so sorry. So, okay, so uh, we have our sponsorship, which I would like to highlight as well from Porcupine Real Estate. Uh, but there's a lot of really good information in here about how they're working for freedom. Bardo Farm is in here, Eden's Farm Table. So it's just this beautiful little... Uh, and where can people get that? So people can find this. I think they're putting them like in farm stalls nice. and that kind of stuff. But I know they'll, uh, they were handing them out last night at some events. And then uh, that is actually a good question. I'm well, just assume... wondering like... Maybe, you is know, where I should tell them to get it uh, into the... Um, like into the, you know, those The things. tourist. Yes. Well, the tourist. Yes. Uh, Actually, that's a great idea. Well, I've always thought that that is such an underutilized resource mm -hmm. in order to spread the message of liberty. I mean, there are all those uh, cards and pamphlets and all those things. And then I know that we have uh, someone like Dan McGuire is actually a tourist ambassador. Is he still? Yes. I didn't know that. So you can become like an ambassador. Yes. So you show people all the great things about New Hampshire because it is like an awesome little country. Yes. All right, you were uh, looking uh, so something anyways, up. Because I know you, this will be of interest to you too, and I forgot to. Uh, so did you see what happened in Nashville with the flag? Yes. Okay, so <laughs> I went and Googled it because I'm like, okay, I know the surface of it. All right, um, so the backstory is the following. Appeal to Heaven. The Appeal it, to Heaven, which is the Pine Tree Riot flag. Flag, which is a, it's kind of like an informal New Hampshire flag. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's from it, like it's, 1772 or something. Yeah, it it's about the Battle that. of Bunker Hill and, you know, the start of the American Revolution and all that stuff. And, they're, you know, it ties back to the Pine Tree Riots from where and all that stuff. So a, a Nashville resident wanted to fly the flag in um, Nashville because they have a city hall pole. And they um, allow, you know, like anything commemorative, you can apply, put, re request that a certain flag be flown. Well, they denied her. Um, saying that they don't think um, it represents, represents the values the of the town. Something like that. I feel and, bad. And honestly, so there was an ACLU court case that went all the way to the Supreme Court. The ACLU representing a group you would not expect. I forget. I'm blanking on who exactly. But they won a over $2 million settlement. Yes. Uh, for First Amendment reasons, so I don't know, city of Nashua, unless you well, guys want that's to what, get sued again, that's maybe what that, make a that's better That's what decision. everybody was saying, is like, this is just a, you're like asking for... Like a lawsuit for, waiting to happen. Uh, because you're just basically saying, no, it doesn't, we don't think that that, that is in, you know, what... We're, the, but, but, and I can assure you, because that flag is very representative, I would say, of uh, pro-liberty people. You sort of see it around. Yep. I know uh, Bill O'Brien and... and uh, Stepanex organizations yeah. name yeah. change to the Pine Tree Riot. I mean, it's definitely embedded as a cultural thing within New England and it's specifically in New Hampshire. And so I think it's a city yeah. hall playing politics. Well, They're I mean, like, oh, we don't like these choosing. people. So, you know, like we're going to say, you know, I can understand, you know, there being an approval process for what goes up on a city hall's flagpole because otherwise, who knows what's going to be right. But this is a legitimate historical flag with legitimate historical reference in the I guess the um, anniversary of this battle or something is June 17th so it's timely it's not just random and so you know the Democrats because Mayor Donchus is a Democrat um, you know the Democrats love to talk about how they're all about freedom of speech and they're all about inclusiveness <laughs> and they're all about acceptance and everything Unless it's unless they're not, in which case then they just say no, 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 not your, not what you want. And, and and not only that, but literally the vitriol and the way they talk about people they don't like will sometimes make my jaw drop because I'm like, look, at a minimum, if you're gonna preach about inclusivity and uh, acceptance and all these things mm -hmm. all the time then apply it equally across the field. You should be as nice to Biden as you are to Trump. Right, right. That's how it works if you believe it. Otherwise, which minorities do you get to discriminate so against Democrats? So I did Democrats? finally find the words, because I was like, the words were matter. It says, um, 
The flagpole in front of City Hall is made available for citizens to fly a flag in support of cultural heritage, observe an anniversary, honor, uh, honor a special accomplishment, or support a worthy cause. And she wanted, this was, um, she wanted to remember the national soldiers who died in the battle, including William Harris, the young, young drummer boy, and Colonel Ebenezer Bancroft, who led the march on Lexington to Condor uh, and conquered by displaying the flag beginning on June 5th, and the anniversary of the battle is June 17th. And this is what she's told. The flag is not in harmony with the message that the city wishes to express and endorse. Therefore, we must deny your request. Well, again, I mean, I tweeted about this yesterday. I suggest that someone 91A, the city of Nashua, with the following specific requests for information, which is how much money have they spent on lawsuits where they yeah, are Nashua's losing the cases, right. but because they're not held accountable, because they can't keep their budget straight, the taxpayer gets taxed yeah. to cover these costs. And Frankly, I mean, just on right to know stuff, I know that number is over about $2 million right. at this stage. And so someone has to hold them accountable. And please recall that actually in those right to know requests, I don't know if this is still the case, but it was years ago, Mayor Donches uh, has a tax variance on his property. <laughs> of course so, he does. you know, there's a reason they don't want people to be digging too deeply into what's going on because why be mayor if you can't allocate um, yourself special favors so i know you were there and then i was there but i left i missed all the all the brouhaha last night at the aldermanic meeting i had been there because uh, friends of piscataqua river park um received recognition from the the mayor and the piscataqua city it was river wonderful or something it was nice um but afterwards i stayed for part of the public comments because there were people to commenting on the school budget proposal and all this stuff and um then i left because it was like eight o'clock and i needed to eat dinner and then i get home and apparently after i left um there was one woman during public comment who got up and was berating joe lavasser repeatedly and her mic was shut off because like whatever she was saying they were like yeah you're done now maybe she went over there three minutes whatever i don't know because i haven't seen the live footage yet um but like the pol she wouldn't move like the police, she oh, wouldn't wow. move. So that was that. Then at some point, I think the Palestinian protester, the pro-Palestinian people, there was a brouhaha with that. I mean, there were only two there because, what well, you know, yes. I was there because uh, Tammy and Dan and my husband and several other people do. Like, I mean, it's so cool. I posted a photo of you yes. guys. And all these people were chiming in and saying, oh, thank you so much. I use that trail. Yeah. I didn't know about this yeah. until you guys started, you know, posting the yep. cleanup pictures. So we're actually drawing people into this beautiful, yeah. it's really like a hidden gem it on really the west is. side. So that was cool. But I only saw so, two yeah, Palestinians were, were kind of so standing on the side because, of course, their sign was in being, all my photos. You know, left, <laughs> people on the left not being tolerant of other viewpoints. So... You know, people get up there and speak in favor of spending more money on schools, and I don't, like, grumble. Ah, I'm not. You know, that's just not the way I do things. You listen to other people's point of view, and you kind of go, okay, whatever. And there was a woman a couple seats down from me who was, every time somebody spoke about protecting the taxpayers, she was like, boo! And I kept, just kept <laughs> saying, okay, you're rude. You're being rude. Because she was just being rude. There was no, like, you're not, that's just rude. Just keep it to yourself so anyways um from what i understand and like i said i haven't seen the footage i'll be looking forward to watching it because it seems very colorful so um in the budget for the city they have a limit they have to um, bring forward any spending proposals by the second tuesday in june which is next tuesday so any spending proposal but then if they are vetoed by the mayor they have until june 30th to vote on them so last night, there's a, all these different ver versions of the budget. The mayor proposes one under the tax cap that he has to propose in March, um, which is usually just a bunch of, you know, funny what, whatever Here's numbers. The made just, to, <laughs> just, just to do it. Um, now, keep in mind, the tax cap this year is at 5.6%, so it's an insane amount of money. Um, and that's because it's attached to the uh, inflation yeah, rate. consumer price index, urban. And, and so of then course, you know, even though they years. tell you nothing's going up, we all buy groceries. So um, then, there, then there was, I think there's an alternative budget that's been proposed by like, I think Pat Long, Bill Berry, and somebody else. 
And then I think, but again, I haven't been able to, been able to watch the footage yet. Um, Republicans came back with something else. So there was this back, back and forth, back and forth. But because there is such a split board, it kept ending in a tie. Seven, 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 seven. So finally, from what I understand, what ended up having to happen is the mayor had to vote in the affirmative to break the tie. Okay. And then veto it. Okay. So that they can extend it to the June 30th. So that they have another, um, what, three weeks to try to come to some compromise. The big, the big question seems to be on the funding of the schools. And, you know, of course, you get the people who um, get up there and say... We can't cut the schools. Look at all the great work they're doing. We're making all this headway. Meanwhile, we're not. The kids still are deficient in reading and math. Uh, you can say that they're coming out well-rounded and all this stuff, but they're not. <laughs> I um, read, speaking about well-rounded, so I read the most ridiculous survey yesterday where it was uh, first-time interviewees, so people, first-time job mm. folks going for interviews. Yes. Uh, I don't remember all the numbers, but I mean, it was it was something like 47 percent, I think, struggle to make eye contact. Because they don't know how. 37 uh, percent have, you know, like something else that's weird and you're kind of d- didn't dress appropriately. You know, is it yep. came in, in pajama pants, which apparently all the school kids are doing. <laughs> Can we just make that a rule at school? Yeah. You're not allowed to wear pajamas to school and no one should take their phones in. But OK, that's, that's a, a separate thing. thing. But the last one, and I think it was either 17 or 19 percent. I didn't have my glasses on, but it was like almost 20 percent. Bring their parents yes. to an interview because we no longer for a job. Because <laughs> adults, what we I always thought of as an adult is still a child in today's world. So part of that, I think, Tammy, is because we have created a system of insanity because oh. the government's too big. Let me explain. For Medicaid or for for health reasons, you're 26. You're still a child, so you can be on your parents' thing. Uh, To go to war, murder people, 18. To drink a beer, 21. Um, So there are all these different numbers that do not make sense. There was a reason we called it Mondechait. It's uh, um, when when you like when you're 18, you become a uh, from a minor to uh, not a major, but whatever. Like you become an adult. An adult. A legal adult. And there was a reason for that because that's kind of like a benchmark. It kind of gives you a oh okay, these things in my life kick in. I'm working towards a goal, and this is how I'm going to be adulting from now on. And now we have made it mad, mad, madness. Because now. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I get pulled into, I, I, you know, you follow things on Facebook or you read things on Facebook so then they just keep feeding you more. And I get this whole thread about all these dilemmas, you know, wedding dilemmas and all these <laughs> dilemmas. And I'm always amazed about like, hi, I'm 25 and my mother wants me to pay this much rent. And I told her I'm going to move out and she doesn't understand why. And I think to myself, you're 25. Why are you still having a discussion <laughs> about whether or not you're living with mommy? And I can assure you, mom's rent is probably well, I mean, better than said, whatever like, you're going to yeah, do if you're living on your own. Why are you living home anyways? I mean, half of, you know, like I moved across the country when I was like, I don't know. I think I was eight, maybe 19. I don't know. I was young. I had I made probably 19. Um, I moved out to California because like I just wanted to go live someplace else. And I, I didn't know what I was, you know, I like it. There were lots but of things. But we survived. But part of it is you, you, you learn. You, and then when I moved back, I had to learn again about like, okay, so what am I doing now? I got to right. move back. I got to rent an apartment. But that's gotta... also that, that, that unsettlingness, that, that moment of, I don't know what I'm doing that's or I feel learn. out of it. That is actually how you learn, grow, and, yeah. and mature and become a more interesting person and discover I mean, I, life. I don't think children have to make any decisions in there i mean i always think about this they've been cuddled to death there's a good book on i um i think about when i was in lived in this one house with my family and i could go i don't remember my mother ever saying you can't go beyond here i was probably in maybe third grade you know i was young i was maybe eight at most right so you'd ride your bike i never went for the longest time beyond two streets this way and one street that way I just didn't. <laughs> and I mean, there was another street. I never went that way further. I don't know why. It just was a thing. But you know what? You like you you venture. Now, you in America, in New York City, you will get arrested if you send your children on the subway 
like to go to school, which used to be like kids used to actually, I know this sounds crazy, but kids used to ride in the 70s, the subways to school in New York City with rifles on their backs. Yeah, well. I don't know, man. I think just, that, you know. It's the, just the, unfortunate because I don't understand how we can expect kids to learn the skills. I mean, part of everything you do as a child you're testing those boundaries, and that's how you learn boundaries because you realize, okay, I can do this, and it's okay. And then you cross the boundary, and you're like, ooh, don't do that. That's beyond the boundary. Or you go over the boundary, and you're like, wait. Yeah. I learned something. But Life I mean. is great. You realize that the boundary I mean, isn't there. Maybe the boundary is over there. And at some point, you realize, okay, this is the like this is the safety boundary, and this is the acceptable boundary. And you kind of learn what is what is but you learn it not not the dictates being put on you and i just think it's unfortunate that kids aren't allowed to explore and and find um find out life for themselves anymore it just seems that's the way it is and then we're shocked that they're 26 and can't figure out life because now they're like i don't know i don't, I don't know you know do i get a sandwich for that like what's the deal <laughs> also uh i did see the book i'm talking about is the coddling of the american mind i believe it's jonathan Haidt. And I saw a new study that came out from him today that talks about the detrimental influence of devices on young children's minds. Yes. So, you know what, I think, you know, I, we should really be saying, you know, these are not real. I, it it doesn't know, have to be a law, parents, right? No, but but if, I will tell you, phone addiction, dopamine addiction, is a real thing. treat your phone like crack and then yeah. start to wonder, well, I mean, is it what I, we want to be giving our kids? in today's world, parents wanting to be able to con their kids to contact them in the case of an emergency. So get them a little flip phone. They don't need an iPhone. They don't need to be able to surf the web or get on apps. They need to be able to call home. Do they, though? Well, I mean, you, if your kid's pinned down in a, you know, shooting situation yeah, or whatever, I guess I would again, want them we to be have, able to. You know, the they, fear factor that it's not in balance. But they don't need to be able to. I say arm the teachers and take the kids' phones away. Solutions. Solutions every day. Anyways. So here, we're going to run out of time. Yes. Here's my big news. I'm going to be on Dr. Phil next week. I awesome. am flying to Texas on Saturday. I'm really excited. We're going to be talking about independence. I think it could be a really big deal for New Hampshire to put us on the map with some innovative, cool, new ways to approach problems because you know what? The way we're doing things is not working. Anyways, um, it'll be interesting to tell you next week who else has filed for office. Um, I'll be able to watch the aldermanic meeting and kind of try to summarize <laughs> that a little bit. Um, if you have any questions about running for office or anything, uh, you can reach out to us. Or if you have any suggestions for the show or you just want to send us hate mail, it's <laughs> manchtalk at gmail.com. And I think that's all we have for this week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.